Welcome to the Chase Benefice Online. Today we celebrate the Feast of All Saints. It's a time when we remember those Christians who have died, as well as those still alive. Together they form a fellowship that transcends death, a mutual belonging of those who have known the grace of God. As our service begins, we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of this week's Collect. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we rejoice in the faith of your saints, Inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jilly is now going to read this week's Gospel. A reading from the Gospel of John. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is such an intriguing story. It seems to carry a multitude of meanings. Mary makes it into an intensely human story. We can empathise with her grief at the loss of her beloved brother and also with her confusion and anger in the face of someone who could have prevented his death. But it becomes clear very soon that we're also being asked to see the story on a different level. It's worth remembering that this story is only told in John's Gospel and that John consistently uses symbolism as he tries to convey the divine nature of Jesus to his readers. So perhaps it's not a story so much about human relationships as it's a story about God. Thus we can recast Mary, not just as a grieving relative, but as a way of understanding what it might mean to be a Christian saint showing the courage and honesty that we need in order to cast our pain and sorrow at the feet of God, to ask him why, to speak to him knowing that he will listen, to trust in his love for us. And the emotion shown by Jesus when faced directly by his own loss and the grief of another reassures us not just that he has power over death, but also that God himself understands our pain, that he weeps for us and with us. Lazarus, in contrast, feels quite remote from us. His essentially symbolic purpose is underlined by the fact that he never speaks. He is used, quite literally, as the living proof of Christ's power over death. And his being raised from the dead is a way of foreshadowing the death of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection. So we can note certain parallels. The burial in the cave, the removal of the stone, and, of course, renewal of life after death. There is a crucial difference, however. 
Lazarus emerges from the tomb still wrapped in burial cloths, cloths that he will need when death finally comes again. Jesus, we know, will leave his burial cloths in the tomb after his resurrection, because death will never touch him again. But let's stay a moment longer with that scene of Lazarus being raised from death. Jesus doesn't go into the tomb to touch him, though touch is often part of Jesus' healing in other gospel stories. Instead, Jesus summons Lazarus to come out by himself. And John tells us that the man that had died came out, his hands, feet and face bound with cloth. But instead of freeing him from his restraints, Jesus orders the waiting crowd to do so. So what are we to make of this? Perhaps it signifies that the divine act of resurrection is now complete, that the sign of victory over death is sufficient, and now Lazarus can simply be handed over to human carers. But I'm inclined to the idea that Jesus not, is not, as it were, turning his back on Lazarus once his work is done, but that he's inviting the people there to become involved in the act of resurrection, the process of renewal. That resurrection is not just a miracle brought about by divine power, but an invitation to participate in God's work, to be transformed by it, to co-create that miracle. Perhaps it's an invitation to know, really know, that death is not the end, and nor is it the most powerful force in our lives. As David Loess has put it, we cannot and should not deny the reality of death, but God is giving us power to defy it, to resist the power of death to distort our lives, its use as the threat by the powerful over the weak, its ability to create so much fear that it drowns out the love and hope in which we are called to live out our lives. So there is, I think, a timelessness to the story. We are given hope after death, but we're given hope now while we are still alive. And we give thanks for the saints who have gone before us, and for the saints who are with us now, who join in with God's work, who care for others, and reach out to help those in need, who help to free others from their restraints.
Chris is going to lead us now in prayer. Let us pray. The response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, strengthen all Christian people by your Holy Spirit and bless all who minister in your church, that we may live as a royal priesthood and a holy nation to the praise of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Empower us by the gift of your life-giving Spirit, that we may be transformed into the likeness of Christ. Give to the world and its peoples the peace that comes from above, that they may find peace and joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with all those who are sick and all those who mourn, that they may know your love for them and their sorrow eased by your healing presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember in your mercy all those who have gone before us. Preserve in your faith your servants on earth. Guide us to your kingdom and grant us peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give, th we give you thanks for the whole company of your saints in glory, with whom in fellowship we join our prayers and praises. By your grace may we, like them, be made perfect in your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we come to the peace. God give you the peace of the blessed, the peace that the world cannot give, the peace that passes all understanding. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God bless. Thank you for joining us for this service today. There will be another online service next Sunday. Details will be on the bulletin and the benefits website. For those who are able to join us in person, there will also be a 10 a.m. service at All Saints Church, Spellsbury. All of our churches are open on Sundays between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. for personal prayer and quiet reflection. And everyone is welcome to join our Wednesday online coffee mornings at 11 a.m. Details of how to join are on the bulletin and the benefits website. And so our service ends now with a blessing. May God, who kindled the fire of his love in the hearts of the saints, pour upon you the riches of his grace. May he give you joy in their fellowship and a share in their praises. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Mm.